Listen to this now. In Genesis chapter 1, he says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And then verse 2 he says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So that is very significant. Verse 2. The description of verse 2 actually is going to be very significant in describing the Shekinah glory of the Lord, which now comes in verse 3. Because in verse 3 it says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. So verse 4, God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Listen to this now. You see that at creation, right? The Lord essentially creates the earth. And we don't know. We don't know how many hours existed between in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, verse 1 and verse 2. Because verse 2 he says, now the earth was formless and so forth. So there is the creation of the heaven and the earth in verse 1. And just to jog your mind, we don't know how many hours or days are there between verse 1 and verse 2. Maybe there are millions of years. But I would like to think that probably it was chronological, sequential, as in finish day 1, move day 2. But most important is this now. He says in verse 2 that the earth was formless, empty and dark. Darkness was all over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the water. But now listen, in verse 3, the Lord Almighty, He orders, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And that light essentially, when you read verse 4, God saw that the light was good, and He separated the light from darkness. That light actually is what separated darkness, chased away darkness. Where that light came, darkness left. So he used that light to demarcate now between day and night, darkness and light. So essentially you see that when the light came, the darkness moved away. But I want to talk about that darkness and the light. That light, verse 16, first of all, look at what he says, verse 16. He says, God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. So he's saying in verse 16 that when the Lord was speaking light, speaking light in verse 3, so that light may separate the darkness from light itself, may chase away the darkness essentially, so that we may have two demarcations, the day and the night. He had not yet created verse 16. He had not yet created the sun and the moon. Verse 16 when he says, God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day, meaning the sun, and the lesser light to govern the night, meaning the moon. And then he added there, says, and he also made the stars. So you understand? Okay. So, actually the creation of the sun and the moon and the stars took place in verse 16. And that tells you very clearly that at the time when Jehovah, the Lord, was creating the light, speaking the light in verse 3, that light is not from the sun. That light is not the sun. So you see that the Lord created the light in verse 3, and that light essentially, which he spoke, actually he spoke it, is the Shekinah glory of the Lord. And that quickly makes you also understand that actually the darkness is referring to in verse 4 and also in verse 2 is the following. It is not the physical darkness that you see. It is not. Again, let me repeat this. The darkness that the Lord is referring to in verse 2 when he says, 
Now the earth was formless and empty and darkness, see the darkness, was over the surface of the deep. That darkness he was referring to was not physical darkness. I'm going to explain this. Because the light that the Lord speaks in verse 3 is not physical light. It is the Shekinah glory of the Lord. But it has a physical manifestation eventually. Because you see that he uses his Shekinah glory that you see in verse 3 to separate the day and the night. So that tells you that the light, the spiritual light that the Lord speaks in verse 3 of Genesis 1 before he created the sun, the moon and the stars in verse 16 actually has has the capacity to manifest in the physical. Did you understand that? It all comes from the spiritual and manifests in the physical. That's why now, look, he says in verse 4, God saw that the light was good. Anything that's good, the only thing that is good to the Lord is holy. So you can see right away, he was talking about the Shekinah glory, the holy light. The holy light that comes from the throne of God. So we see very clearly that the darkness then also must have been spiritual darkness that was hovering all over the earth. And then when the Shekinah glory of the Lord is spoken in verse 3, it now chases the spiritual darkness and then demarcates two zones, becoming day and night. And we see very clearly here also that even the darkness, the spiritual darkness he's talking about here, emanates from the spirit, the spiritual realm, and is able to manifest in the physical realm. So did you understand what the Lord was speaking about there? And it's very important to understand this. Now, look at this now. This light here that you see running from verse 1 to verse 3 of Genesis 1 is spiritual, the Shekinah glory of the Lord. And I will show you in Isaiah, where Isaiah saw that when the Lord, the Messiah, comes, the coming of the Messiah we're waiting for, he comes in the brilliance, the mighty splendor of his light, and he says, it is seven times the brightness of the sun. So this light in verse 3 is actually seven times the brightness of the sun. But pay attention to this. Follow me on this now. This same light you see in verse 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. That is the same light you see in John chapter 1. Where John says in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word became God. And the word became the light. And you see, and darkness has never understood it. That is the same light that you see he is talking about. Can you go to John chapter 1 verse 1? That is the same light that John was essentially talking about. That the Lord was speaking about in John chapter 1. And so that's very powerful revelation here. That the Lord brought forth his Shekinah glory right from the beginning. In verse 3, because he saw that there was a spiritual darkness. And that light that gave us day and night, created day and night, that light that also gave morning and evening, that light was not from the sun or the moon, or the stars. Because the sun, the moon, and the stars, we see are created in verse 16. Now look at this. And that's why, when the Lord says that the light has come, and darkness has never understood it, he meant the spiritual light of God, the Shekinah, the mighty Shekinah glory of the Lord, that comes to chase away the darkness. That means, Initially, when you look at the earth, let's go back first of all to Genesis chapter 1. Look at what happened to the earth before that light came. He said in verse 1, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Can you go to Amplified? It's even better. It's Genesis chapter 1. He will now explain to you the spiritual darkness. That's what I want to explain here. It says, In the beginning, God prepared form fashioned and created the heavens and the earth. But look at verse 2, it says, 
the earth was without form, formless, and an empty waste, and darkness was upon the face of the very great deep. The Spirit of the Lord was moving, hovering, brooding over the surface of the waters. And he said, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, meaning holy. You say good, stable, pleasant, and he approved it. You see that now? Another time when the Lord says approved it is when he's speaking in Job chapter 28 when he's talking about wisdom. I think it's verse 27, 28. He says, and he tested it, affirmed it, confirmed it, and approved it. Now you see he was talking about wisdom in that place. And he was talking about essentially the fear of the Lord which is wisdom. And here he also talks about now at this place that he approved it and God separated the light from the darkness. But what I want to bring to your attention here is look, look at this now. In the beginning, the earth was without form. So which means there was confusion in the earth. That means Genesis 1, I'm talking about Genesis 1. That means there was confusion in the earth. There was formless. And then he says, there was darkness on the earth and in the surface of the deep. But look at this now. That darkness was spiritual darkness. And so, meaning, there was even no worship. In the beginning there was no worship. And that's why you see in verse 3 it comes up now. He brings the Shekinah glory. Which again like I said as we are going to see in Isaiah in the book of Isaiah is seven times brighter than the sun which is created in verse 16. But now look at this now. If you go to John 1 John chapter 1 he says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. And he goes on to say, In the beginning was life. And the life was the light of mankind. Are you seeing that now? And what John is talking about here, John is referring to creation. And that's why I brought you here. He's referring to the other light I talked about in Genesis 1.3. That's why he's talking about the beginning. And he says that in verse 4 again, I'm talking about John chapter 1 verse 4. Yes, in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. So did you understand now? The Kivod Adonai, the glory of the Lord I'm talking about, is saying that when that light came in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, it was not physical light from the sun and the moon. Because the sun and the moon are created where? In verse 16. But now he expounds further and he says that that light which he brought in verse 3, now had life. And that life became the light of all mankind. Did you understand the light is talked about here? Yes. And that's why later, even the book of Revelation, it says, when we will now go into the bliss, the paradise, the kingdom of God, the complete joy, complete happiness, into heaven, into the new Jerusalem, it says, there will not be sun and moon. Did you understand? So this is very powerful because in the beginning the Lord gave us a little taste of the heaven. Hallelujah. When he brought in verse 3 the Shekinah glory, the light of his Shekinah glory. He descended the Shekinah glory to bring order when there was formless, to make some form on the earth. To bring order when there was confusion on the surface of the earth after creation. He now tells us that that light he brought to bring order in the spiritual darkness that hovered was actually, was life. And that life was the light of man. Then you begin to understand, who is this light in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3? This is the Messiah. Because he says here, the light shines in the darkness 
and the darkness has not overcome it, has never understood it in other versions. Then he begins to talk about the coming of the Messiah. In verse 9 he says, The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Hallelujah. Verse 8 he says, He himself was not the light, that's the forerunner, right? But he came only as a witness to the light that was coming. So did you understand this revelation today here? That when the Shekinah glory of the Lord was sent, He essentially sent the glory of the Messiah. He sent the Messiah. Did you understand? Do you understand why? Many times they say, He was already slain in the beginning to lay the foundation of the earth. Look now. God Almighty, our Father Jehovah, He creates the earth the heavens and the earth. And there is confusion. Formless. No worship. Meaning no worship. And he says darkness hovering around. Meaning evil and wickedness. In verse 1 and verse 2 of Genesis chapter 1. But eventually. When he now comes to counter that darkness. That confusion. That evil and wickedness. He brings a light which is not the sun. And that light, you see, he says, and he saw that the light was good. Mm. Good to the Lord means holy. Mm. And he used the light now to separate day from darkness. Now look at this now. Right now, we are told that the earth is in the night. Mm. And he says he separated the day from the night. Mm. Right now, the earth is where? In the night. Mm. We are waiting for the midnight hour to strike. Mm. We are in the pitch darkness now. That's why there's a lot of sin, homosexuality is being endorsed. There are legislations being enacted in almost every other country. Europe, in the US, every state. But the question then becomes this. Look now. He separated using the Shekinah glory of Genesis 1 verse 3, which we have now seen, and in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. We began to understand, wow. So in verse 3, when the Lord brought light to counter the darkness that was marauding and hovering and governing the earth, the formless confusion, that was Christ the Messiah, the light of all mankind that became the life. He said, in him was life. That is very powerful. <laughs> and he says, verse 9, again, I'm now reading John chapter 1, verse 9. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming to the world. He was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children, the children of God. Children born not out of the natural descent, nor of human descent, human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. Verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now let me explain to you this. So when you look at Genesis, go back to Genesis now. Eh? When you look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, formless, confusion, no worship. Verse 2, and you see now, the earth was confused, no form. That's verse 2. Verse 3, you say, and God brought that light. Said, let there be light. Verse 3, when he says, let there be light, that light was the Messiah. That light was the Christ. That light was the Jesus of Nazareth. And because later, you see, it became flesh now, and then the redemption that is being described in the book of John. So this is very important for us to understand. The role of the Shekinah glory of the Lord. When the Shekinah glory of the Lord visited on that December 31st, 
2012 in Kisumu. Now you can understand for yourself what that beheld for the kingdom of God and for the church, even unto the nations. You can see very, very clearly that that Shekinah glory that came was essentially the glory that bespoke the grace and the truth. And now in Genesis chapter 1, he says, the grace and the truth. Yes. That is what chased away the darkness. Mm. And that's why he split. Now we are in the darkness. He is coming again. But he left us his word. Mm. And the Holy Spirit to enforce, reinforce, implement mm. the worship that he put together that chased away the darkness. Mm. But when he comes, he still comes with the same grace and truth. Mm. Only that the dispensation of grace will have ended. Mm. But when he brings the truth this time, then, now, again, darkness is just away. You understand? Yes. So, what I wanted to bring forth here is that the Shekinah glory that we saw that came to Kisum on December 31st, 2012, the mighty cloud is the same glory that you see in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. It is seven times brighter than the sun. And it's a spiritual light that has come to the dark church. A spiritual light that has come to the darkness of the nations, the dark world. Thank you so much.